Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome back to the Friendship Quilt Along. Today I'm quilting our 11th block with more ruler foot quilting on my long arm. So let's get started learning more about using the super slide and the ditcher ruler together. So I've started out stitching a straight line right through this inner border and this is going to separate the block which is back here, the stars, uh, from my uh, nice scrappy border and I have decided to use River Path. This is a really cool design and I'm going to quilt it with rulers. So I'm taking my super slide ruler and I'm lining it up here so I'm about a quarter inch from the edge of the quilt and I'm lining up the straight line on my ruler so that this deepest part of the curve is going to run along that line that I've actually already stitched. And with the long arm and ruler foot quilting spacing, that's going to put me out at exactly a quarter inch from that line of stitching. Now all of the stuff as far as does it matter, <laughs> you know, where that starts, where you put it, answer is no. I'm just telling you exactly where I'm getting started so that way if you want to make the exact same design, you can. Now the key with the super slide and mini slide ruler is that it's 100% symmetrical. So I can take this if this starts feeling uncomfortable and I can flip it just like this and get back on track. And I love that about this ruler because it just makes it so much more functional. You've got the same curve on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna click it on, I'm coming down. And because this is such a big ruler, it's easy for it to tip. So I like to quilt about half of the curve at once and position my hand so that way it's the least amount that it's going to be tippy. So I'm very careful with this. I definitely say that, you know, the longer the ruler, the harder it is to control. So keep an eye on that whenever you're ordering or buying rulers. The bigger it is, the harder it is to keep a handle on it and stop it from moving around. You can see that, you know, if I put too much pressure here, it's gonna lip up that way. So always watch out for that. Okay, now I'm positioning here. Again, lining up that edge line with that line I've already stitched. You could also be lining up with the ditches too. That would be fine. And I'm just getting, this is kind of setting a foundation. You know, I want a nice curve, a nice big curve, setting that foundation on my quilt. And one other thing to note that with this ruler, you're stopping a quarter inch from the end. So here I can show you there is an etch line, one from the end, that's where you stop and reposition it, and that also lines up with that center mark. So if you stop here and then rotate the ruler around, then you can get started back right here in the center mark on the ruler. And that definitely helps line things up. As you can see, I just did that, I flipped it around, lining up that center line with the needle so it's nice and straight across. And I'll just finish up this curve. So this is going to be a cool border. This is kind of an all over quilted border. So basically what that means is we are stitching the border and, and the lines and completely ignoring <laughs> the piecing. And this is cool because it allows you to create nice texture with your quilting design without um, having to worry too much about stitching in the ditch or doing anything too crazy to your piecing design. Okay, I want these lines to be spaced out three quarters of an inch apart. So what I'm doing here, I don't even have to really do math. I just have to line up that etch line on the ruler so it's lined up with the line that I already stitched. And I'm lining up the etch line that's a half of an inch away from the edge. And then I just make sure that that stays in position as I stitch on down. Now you might've noticed that my machine is hesitating ever so slightly. And that is, I've noticed, whenever I'm going over seams. So whenever I have a big bulky seam allowance underneath my foot, it seems to be hesitating ever so slightly. And I think that is just maybe the height of my foot. Might be the, also the amount of pressure that I'm putting down on my ruler and down on the ruler plate because if you put too much pressure downward on this, that actually stops your machine from moving. So you have to watch out for that. You know, you wanna hold it in place firmly and you wanna keep the ruler and the foot together at all times. Notice how, you know, those two stay, I try and keep those two locked together because of course this is, you know, you have free motion here. You know, I could take the, the machine and go start wiggling around and do something crazy. And, and the point though is to keep it controlled, keep the ruler and the foot together. Okay, I'm gonna sneak in here 
and carefully stitch on that line. I'm not breathing as I do this. <laughs> All right, so I have another ruler actually that I've shown, I, I shared with you guys last month and I wanna show you just one of the things that's really great at. This is the ditcher and this is terrific, not only for stitching in the ditch, but also for situations like this. When you wanna travel stitch perfectly, grab the ditcher, that's gonna help you out. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my inside line. So I first do that little bit of stitching on my previous line of quilting. Then I'm going to link up with my curve. And you can see this is ending up creating really beautifully spaced three quarter inch lines. So these lines are all consistently three quarters of an inch apart, but it's gonna require a good bit of stitching, of travel stitching down in order to get to the next section. So I'm setting up the ditcher. That's another ruler here. And this is the ditcher slot. There's actually um, four different ways, three different ways that you can ditch with this ruler. I've got this end here, and this is really useful whenever you have, like maybe you're um, echo ditching, that's really useful for this one, or just visually if that really works for you. This one uh, in this situation doesn't really work because I don't have any a straight line right across to line up with, except for these two little hooks on the end, and that's not enough for me right here. I feel like I would be tippy. So I don't like that one for this situation, but I like it for other situations. Now this side, I like a lot, has a slot here, but it's not too long of a slot. I've got lines here on both sides that are gonna help me line up with that. Let me show you how this works, because this one can work pretty good for this situation. So basically, I'm kind of eyeballing further down. I'm making sure that that line stays on that line of stitching, or if I was stitching in the ditch, I'd make sure that that's staying on the ditch. Now I'm stitching down until back here, I'm about a half of an inch from that line of, that curving line of stitching in the back of the foot. And that's when I know visually, I'm ready to grab my super slide again, get back in position and go on ahead and stitch into that area and finish my curve. Now, if this seems way complicated to you, <laughs> Please understand that you can always quilt this by marking simple curves on your quilt. You do not have to use rulers. You could mark simple curves on your quilt. You could use walking foot quilting. You could use free motion quilting. You could freehand this, meaning no marks at all. You just simply stitch the lines and then echo the lines. Uh, you could use a guide on your walking foot. That really works well too. So please understand this isn't the only way to do it. This is one way, and as you can see, this is pretty cool. I love it. Okay, I got off ever slightly right there, but that's okay. There we go. So stitch down and I can finish this curve going in this direction. So I wanna stitch all the way off, just like so. So as you can see, whenever you do that inner curve, that's gonna take a little bit more time just to manage that because you've gotta do that careful travel stitching but it looks great. Now I'm gonna continue this curvy border stitching across the exact same way. You've already seen me do this using the super slide ruler. I'll line that up and continue that curve. But here's the thing about long arm quilting. It's really easy to do the border that's going horizontally across the frame. It's a lot harder to do the border that's going this way. So I'm gonna cheat. I'm actually going to keep the border going in this direction. So I wanna just show you guys what I'm gonna do. I'm basically just going to line up this ruler, shifting it back and forth until the curve on the ruler matches up with that stitching line, the curve etched, I should say, two from the edge. So I am exactly three quarters of an inch from that previous stitching line. I'm gonna stitch to that line of quilting grab my ditching ruler, and I feel like I've got a little bit of space going in this direction. When I'm going in this direction, what's funny, the, it's, the, it's the foot, it's not, it's not the ruler, it's the foot. You can see I have just a little bit of wiggle room here, but I don't have that wiggle room going in this direction, so you need to be mindful of that. I think it'll work better to use this ruler going like this, because I can see clearly, and that little bit of extra space is not gonna let me wiggle because there's no extra space. I'm just pushing the ruler right up against it and keeping it on the line. Perfect. All right, that looks great. So now I'm just gonna wash and repeat, stitch that curve using super slide, stitch on down, stitch that next curve, just like so. 
And I hope you can see this is going to actually be very fast, very, very quick design. It's going to be no problem to get all of these lines knocked out using a combination of these two awesome rulers. So I'm just going to take my time working through this and then I'm going to advance the quilt on the frame and we're going to quilt something very different in the stars section. So I got to thinking about this center block and there's so many different ways that I could quilt this. I thought about a big super spiral here in the center. I thought that would be kind of a cool idea. But ultimately, I really like this wavy border and I thought it would be neat to bring that in and maybe do the waves going in the opposite direction. So you get kind of a nice contrast between the center of the block with the waves and then the border. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add some straight lines just to give myself some space between that border and this where I'm going to do the waves here in the center. Uh, and I'm going to keep these lines nice and far apart. So this is about an inch and a half apart. And I'm using my ditcher ruler. And the nice thing about it is if you count the lines on the ditcher, there's the center line. You can tell that because it, it comes into that loop. So there's the center line. So that's one, two, three, four. That's one inch. And then you've got another quarter inch here and then where your needle is, which is right down the middle. So this is exactly inch and a half spacing if you line up with that center line of the ditcher ruler. So that is what I am doing. I'm lining up that center line with the stitching line that I did right through here. So basically I stitched a line right through the middle of that little narrow bit of, it's like sashing, it's kind of like an inner border, okay? So I ran, stitched right through the middle of that, then I spaced out a line an inch and a half from there, and then now I'm stitching another line an inch and a half from there. And it's more or less lining up with the piecing, but not exactly. I, di I didn't want to do anything super matchy-matchy with the piecing. I wanted these lines to be a little bit more random, to almost say like, you know, what I'm kind of saying with this design is the piecing is not nearly as important as the quilting and that's what I'm honoring here. I'm, I'm inventing a new design and stitching all over the piecing and saying, you know, I, I want this extra texture to go on this scrappy block. Now, if it doesn't work for you to hold the ruler like this, what I, I can see here clearly that I'm stitching basically a, a half of an inch from that ditch, which means that this should line up also with the ditch from here. So I can space out and measure coming from there the exact same way. So, you know, if one direction or one angle holding the ruler doesn't work for you, rotate it around and see if you can find a different uh, way to hold it that will work better. Okay, so I'm coming on down and I know I want to be a half of an inch basically from that spot. So I'm going to eyeball that. That looks good. Nice and straight across. You know, make sure every once in a while that you're not tilting the ruler. It's really easy to do that. And you end up with a, you know, kind of a <laughs> diagonal line <laughs> when you didn't mean to. All right, so for here, again, lining up that center, that etched line right through the center with that stitching line. Looks like I'm just ever so slightly under where I should be. So I'm gonna also slightly pull the machine this way and then stitch down. So it's like two stitches off, not a big, deal. And I like to put my whole hand on the ruler when I can. It just really helps to keep it in position. And then I want to make sure it doesn't, you know, tip or lip up. You know, I really like to keep a nice firm grip on it. And again, the key is always keeping your ruler foot pressed up tight against that ruler. That is the key to everything working. All right, so coming on down. And I, I like this. I think three lines is plenty. Kind of gives a little channel through that area. It says, you know, okay, well, there was the border. And then here was kind of almost a no man's land of space. And, you know, and it also opened up the quilting too. So this is, you know, inch and a half openness here. So, you know, it, it softens up the block. And let's actually also bring that in whenever we do our super slide quilting. Let's make sure that we keep this nice and open. So what I think I'm gonna do, let's see here. I can go in this direction, that'll work. And I think I'm just going to have it so that the ruler is lined up 
And what I can do is I can line up, there's uh, etched lines on the ruler that are like straight lines in the middle. And I'm gonna line up the one that is three from the edge, the third etched line from the edge. That's what I'm gonna line up. Now this first line is kind of your baseline. So you just really wanna make sure that it's, you know, straight. <laughs> which doesn't make sense since it's a curve. But what I mean is you wanna make sure that the ruler stays straight on the quilt, right? So I stop a quarter inch from the end and then I reposition the ruler. And what's nice is that I can't really see this line back in here very well, but I can see this line and I can line up that line with the etch lines on down the center of the ruler. So if you know, you're ever looking at it going, well, I can't really quite see. Look at the other lines in the ruler and see what else you can line up. Chances are you can line up something else and that will work great. Now you wanna creep your hand down and not let it lip up. There we go. That looks great. I'm super happy with that, but I wanna make sure that these lines are nicely spaced out. Although I, you know, I am honoring what I did here in the border, I don't wanna end up with super a whole block that's super dense. And this kind of ended up being a little bit denser than I would like. So what I'm gonna do is stitch over. And if I line up the etch line here on the ditcher and I stitch over, well then that looks like that's going to give me uh, an inch spacing. And if I measure that that's a half of an inch, another half an inch, that will give me an inch spacing. So let's go with that and just see where that's gonna take us, if that looks wide enough. And that's actually going to be only a half of an inch wider than what I did over here. Still gonna give us a great texture and it's gonna be a little softer. But here's the deal. We don't have an etched line, a, a complete etched line. We have some straight lines we can line up here on this super slide ruler. So that's what we're gonna have to do is line up the line that we stitched before with the third one, two, three, the third etch line on the ruler. So line that up nicely, make sure you're pressing against the foot, click it on and stitch on down. So understand that, you know, a ruler is really only as good as the lines that are etched on it. I truly believe that. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of time planning the markings on my rulers and fiddling around with that quite a bit because you know, it really affects how well you can use the ruler and what you can do with it. So here I'm able to easily create this beautiful one inch spacing between these curving lines. So coming down, stitch over. Now I just kind of eyeball, I wanna eyeball a three quarters of an inch here because we get another quarter inch between the edge of the foot and the needle. So I eyeball three quarters of an inch put my ruler in place and see where I'm at. You just kind of wiggle it back and forth until you've got an edge line lined up back here. And this looks roughly correct down here. Eh, it looks pretty good, you know? And then also because the lines are spaced out a little bit wider apart, it's not gonna be super noticeable if you're off a little bit. You know, it's not the end of the world if you bring the lines an eighth of an inch closer or an eighth of an inch further apart wider spacing line, the lines uh, really makes it more forgiving. Where you don't want to get off uh, and where you really wanna be very persnickety is whenever you're quilting denser. So let's say you had a block and you want quarter inch grid lines or quarter inch space um, curves, then that's definitely going to be something where if it is off, it will be noticeable. So you wanna be really mindful of that and careful. And then of course, if you're stitching anything on a quarter inch scale, you're generally spending a lot more time on it. <laughs> That's kind of quilting it to death. All right, guys, I think you get the idea of what I'm gonna be doing from here on out. I'm gonna use the super slide ruler and the ditcher to help me fill this entire space in with some beautiful curving lines. And here's what it looked like whenever I finished this scrappy tracks block. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot quilting this scrappy tracks block with me. If you'd like to find the rulers that I was using, you can find them at leahday.com slash ruler. And if you'd like to find the pattern for this super cute, super scrappy block, you can find that at leahday.com slash friendship. Until next time, let's go quilt.